Stealth games. We love them and we don't get enough of them anymore. So today we wanted to highlight some of the great ones we've loved throughout the years. Stealth games that, you know, like truly test your sneak level, if you know what I mean. We got 20 fun games to talk about. So let's jump in with number 20. Aragami is a third person stealth adventure game where you play as Aragami, who is like a spirit. You have some abilities and tools, most notably the ability to teleport to any shadow. And essentially it really makes what would be a standard third person stealth game into something a little bit more special. With a really cool art style and a pretty good vibe and multiple difficulty levels, it can be pretty challenging. And I mean, not to mention the fact that it's just a straight up good old third person stealth game. You can be a sneaky murder man or you can try and be completely undetected and just kind of disappear like a ghost and it can be a lot of fun. Actually, more recently, we've gotten a sequel, Aragami 2, but unfortunately, it's not quite as good as the first one, so we're gonna focus on that. Definitely check it out if you haven't. It's affordable, it's easy to pick up, but you can spend a good amount of time with it. Now over at number 19, uh, we gotta give some love to one of the OGs, Sly Cooper. Just really all the Sly Cooper games. Sly Cooper really perfected that kind of old school one hit and you're dead type thing and integrating a little bit of stealth with it, you know, hiding from security systems, hiding from enemies. And if you were young when these games came out, you felt like a sneaky badass. And that's why people just love these games and are still clamoring for another one to this day. Will it ever happen? We don't know for sure, but we had to give some love to Sly Cooper. Next over at number 18, we thought they were worth at least highlighting the Assassin's Creed games. Now, of course, in more recent years, this can be a little debatable as the stealth is pretty simple and straightforward. You hide in bushes, you hide in grass, you climb up on a building, stuff like that. But every game has had varying levels or degrees of stealth mechanics to them. And some of them have been pretty good from some of the earlier games with the social stealth mechanics and the ability to hide in plain sight in crowds of people or sitting on a bench. Two other games like Assassin's Creed Unity giving you a bit more of a crouch button, which sounds ridiculous, but it really changed things up. The Assassin's Creed series and really other Ubisoft games like an honorable mention, Watch Dogs 2, they've really played around with stealth elements a lot in different ways. And really with Assassin's Creed in particular, with the social stealth in the earlier days, we thought it was worth giving some props to just because it's unique and different and it really worked well in that incredibly underrated multiplayer mode. Next over at number 17, the Deus Ex games. You know, we're gonna mention a couple of simulation PC style games where you have a lot of freedom to approach your gameplay scenarios. And Deus Ex is worth highlighting, specifically the newer ones, Human Revolution and Mankind Divided, uh, because they just had some really good scenarios that if you chose a stealth option, they were just really fun. And the game gave you a lot of really interesting tools to do so, should you choose to embrace them. Mankind Divided especially, uh, even though that one wasn't quite as awesome as Human Revolution as a whole on the story front, there were some really well-built scenarios and levels that were fun to sneak around. Seriously, if you don't believe me, go back and revisit it. Next at number 16, the Tenchu series. Of course, we had to mention awesome ninjas creeping around, dude. I feel like when you watch these YouTube videos, like nobody ever mentions Tenchu anymore. And Tenchu Stealth Assassins was really like one of the first games to give you that real feeling of creeping around as a ninja, using your tools, climbing and creeping around on rooftops and sneaking up on dudes. The series had its ups and downs, of course. I was really into Wrath of Heaven. Uh, the games aren't really around anymore, but at the time, they were something else. They were incredibly unique and they had a really good stealth experience. I was unlike anything else on the market. It was pretty challenging. It could be gory. And of course it was entertaining. This is still a series that we're really, really hoping eventually makes a comeback. Next over at number 15, believe it or not, we're going to highlight Alien Isolation for its pretty damn fun stealth elements. There are a lot of horror games out there that involve running away and hiding from a creature or a bad guy, but Alien Isolation felt like it was fully fleshed out. You had some options, you had some tools, and it just felt really, really well crafted. But like you take that stuff and you couple it with the tension, the fear, the dread based on basically the original Alien movie, that type of atmosphere, it's unmatched. That with stealth is the perfect combo for us. So yeah, that's why it's on the list. 
Now, over at number 14, if we're talking about movie tie-in games, we got to talk about The Chronicles of Riddick, Escape from Butcher Bay. This was one of those games that we all thought was going to be absolutely crappy, but it, it turned out to be pretty sweet. It's based on the whole Vin Diesel, Pitch Black, Chronicles of Riddick universe thing. And they made a really damn good game out of it that like really stretches out the lore, that really expands upon some things, and it was just a good old solid first person stealth adventure. Long story short, you are of course the titular Riddick and you are in one of the most brutal jails and you gotta get out. The game had some guns and some first person hand to hand combat, but the stealth sections were absolutely the best and they were pretty challenging because you could die pretty quickly. It was an unexpected surprise and a really cool one. It still doesn't get enough love, so we wanted to highlight it. Next over at number 13, we have Invisible Ink, which is essentially top-down turn-based stealth, which might turn some of you off, but don't get it twisted. This is actually really cool, and even if it's turn-based, uh, the tension and the strategy is still 100% there like any other stealth game. Not only is like the cool stylized spy, corporate infiltration, future-y type thing, just a really good vibe, a really good setting for a game, uh, but the actual amount of creativity within all of this is pretty sweet. It's it's from some developers who have proven themselves to really know stealth uh, from another game we're going to talk about on this list. But here, uh, you're able to choose from a bunch of different characters and kind of build them out with different tools and skills. And all the encounters are randomly generated. So it felt like there was always something new and it was always a big surprise. Invisible Ink is super underrated and really special and stealth game fans should check it out. Next over at number 12, if we're talking about Invisible Ink, we gotta also give some love to Volume. Volume is a game from the indie darling development studio, Bithel Games, and essentially, this is a original Metal Gear Solid 1 inspired game. We're talking kind of like a slightly top-down angle, we're talking vision cones, all that stuff. There's good atmosphere to it, uh, voice acting, just the general style, but really it was the creativity behind all the encounters. Like everything just felt really smart and witty and it all felt like a massive puzzle more than just a sneaking around guards type of thing. There are a hundred levels. The game released in 2015, uh, but there was a lot of content added to it and it's definitely worth it if you're looking for something a little bit different to check out. Next over at number 11, I feel like we got another obligatory one. We mentioned Sly Cooper. Now we got to mention the Siphon Filter games. While in the earlier games, the stealth could be a little goofy here and there, we got to give them points for doing it, man. The technology was really limited at the time. I mean, you could tell just by looking at these older games here, but still, you were infiltrating areas. You were avoiding detection the best you can. Uh, you were shooting out lights. You, eventually, you would get into a bunch of shootouts. But that feeling of being a cool spy, of infiltrating, somewhere uh, with such limited technology. The fact that we were able to play this as kids and, and truly feel like we were awesome sneaky badasses, that gives it major points in our book. Is nostalgia clouding us with this one? Yes, absolutely. But hey, we're admitting it. Next over at number 10, let's talk about a game that has some really good stealth elements while not being a complete stealth game. It's the Batman Arkham games. Some people say Batman Arkham City has the best stealth scenario. Some people say it's Arkham Knight. Uh, whoever you are, you know that the stealth sections that Rocksteady Games crafted with all these are just so satisfying. The game can only be challenging in specific spots, but I hate to use the tired phrase like go ahead and meme me, but like it does really make you feel like Batman. You're creeping around, you're scooping up dudes, you're disappearing instantly, you're using every tool at your disposal, and that's why it's worth pointing out here. Yes, you're crawling around in vent shafts, yes, you're hiding up in dark shadowy corners, but a good stealth game really also relies on the strength of your tools, and this being Batman means you have a ton of awesome tools, and the game took advantage of them to great success. So we know this is a bit of a weird one to include, but we thought the stealth sections were worth highlighting. Next over at number nine, let's talk about a series that has an absolute cult following. It's the Styx games. There's two of them, Styx, Master of Shadows, and Styx, Shards of Darkness. Uh, these are Cyanide developed games. Uh, they're a little bit on the lower budget side, but if you can look past some of the roughness, uh, what you have are some really compelling stealth games here that are pretty unique because it takes place in this dark, kind of weird medieval fantasy world where you just play as this sneaky, gross goblin dude. There's literally no other game like that out 
there and they really nail it with the tools that Styx has to what it feels like to square up against an enemy that's double your size, uh, to some of the verticality, to the level design and encounters, uh, the ability to embrace light and shadow. It's what a lot of stealth fans have really wanted. Personally, and this is an unpopular opinion, I actually like the first one more, but they are pretty cool. And like I said, even if they are a little bit rough around the edges, now that time has passed, we're, we're still just grateful that they were made. Because like I said at the start of this video, we still just don't really get enough third person stealth games anymore. Next over at number eight for our PC fans, let's talk Shadow Tactics, Blades of the Shogun. This is an incredibly unique uh, top-down strategy, like tactical stealth game that takes place in medieval Japan during the Edo period. This is an incredibly fun and challenging game where you essentially take a team of different stealthy characters that all have different abilities and different levels of real sneakiness and it's a game that you have to kind of take slow. The skill sets are really unique, but also take a little bit of time to figure out. And then like all the scenarios that the game presents you with, some of them look pretty staggering at times, but the fun is really trying to crack that code in terms of just sneaking around or getting through a level and the setting is unmatched. If you're looking for a challenge and you're looking for a bit of a different stealth game, oh man, we gotta recommend Shadow Tactics. We've included this on a couple of lists over the past few years and we think if you're you're playing on PC, it's definitely worth your time. Next over at number seven, let's talk about the Arcane games, specifically the Dishonored games. Both Dishonored 1 and 2 give you a ton of awesome stealth opportunities. Granted, it's a simulation game. Uh, you can approach things however you want, be it violent or super quiet, and some of the stealth options are just really awesome. Granted, Corvo only has a couple of gadgets and tricks, but every single one is designed so well and is so satisfying to use that it just makes the stealth experience and getting around these goofy guards all that much more fun. Also, in recent memory, it's worth highlighting Deathloop as well. It has some really good stealth elements. It's simple. A lot of the game is focused more on just killing, but some of that sneaky stuff and some of those good sneaky headshots are absolutely satisfying. But really, first things first, if you've never played the Dishonored games, pick them up and try and go sneaky. It can be very challenging, but it is incredibly rewarding. Next over at number six, Sniper Elite 4, or really all the Sniper Elite games, are downright incredible. Sniper Elite 4 really expands things and gives you much more open environments, and what comes with that is just more opportunity for sneakiness. Essentially, you're just a World War II sniper creeping around different exotic locations, finding a good position, and taking out some bad guys. Of course, we've talked about it to death, like all of the really fun sniper mechanics where the game goes into x-ray mode and shows your bullet like exploding dudes' heads, but uh, what comes with that also is being the sneaky sniper. Not only walking around while crouched, but also using things to mask your gunshots, be it a nearby bombing raid on the battlefield, a lightning strike. Proper timing and careful consideration are all required to pull off those perfect shots, and it makes you feel like the pinnacle of a sniper stealth master. It sounds silly, and honestly, the game can be pretty goofy and over the top sometimes. But in terms of that satisfaction of successfully getting in and out and nailing your targets, man, it's awesome. Now down to number five, Mark of the Ninja. Man, this game released in 2012 and we're still thinking about it all the time. When we came up with this list, this is one of the first ones we thought about besides the obvious ones, just because it's so good. And also it's one of the only like two and a half, like 2.5 3D stealth games that really feel satisfying and give you those genuine sneaky experiences. Like a lot of good stealth games, you have a lot of options, a lot of choices. You can try and get through the thing completely sneaky without touching anyone one or be a silent murderer. And while you are not the strongest character in a fight and you can pretty quickly get outnumbered and blown away, you can also get some really brutal kills in and it's pretty sweet. But the game really does a good job of making you feel like you creep around. It's like a 2D Tenchu in a lot of ways. The verticality of the levels was so impressive. Every encounter is super memorable and the tools at your disposal and the way the game progresses is just Mm, chef's kiss. When stealth games let you truly just kind of hide and creep around in the shadows and worry about sound and light and all that stuff, that's where they're at their best. And in Mark of the Ninja, when you add just good production values, cool visuals, music, and buttery smooth controls, it just makes for a damn good game. Now down to number four, we have the Hitman series. Let's go more recent and highlight the Hitman World of Assassination trilogy. Hitman games are very unique stealth games. It's not so much you creeping around and being sneaky, but more 
you being sneaky in plain sight and using strategy and cunning. Granted, if you wanna be hardcore, you can try and keep that suit on the whole time and sneak yourself around. But whatever your play style may be, it makes you feel like a sneaky badass, but in a way, not a lot of other games do. The only other game out there that made you wear a disguise and made you feel like you were really getting away with something cool and slick was the original Mission Impossible game for Nintendo 64. But since then, we've been hiding in disguises all the time as awesome Agent 47. And the way the newer game's levels are built and their encounters and scenarios are built, uh, they give you so much freedom and creativity in how you wanna take out your targets and just generally how you wanna sneak around a level. As a long time diehard Hitman fan from the original PC game, I was actually pretty skeptical of this newer trilogy, how they kind of went episodic at first, but once I played Hitman 3, it all connected, and I'm really glad IO Interactive made these things. Man, these are excellent stealth games. Now down to number three, we're getting the big three, and these are all kind of in interchangeable order. The first we wanna highlight are the Metal Gear Solid games, of course. If we're talking the most recent one, Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain, it has some of the best stealth gameplay around. The amount of tools you have at your disposal, the amount of freedom, uh, the way the stealth actually works in the open world is just incredibly well designed. As a longtime Metal Gear fan, the story and the Metal Gear-ness isn't quite my favorite, but the gameplay is absolutely unmatched. It's like pretty much a perfect stealth game. But everybody has a favorite Metal Gear Solid game. A lot of people will say Metal Gear Solid 3 is the pinnacle of stealth. Me, because I'm 100 years old, I'll say the original Metal Gear Solid is perfect stealth. But regardless, however you feel, the whole damn series is awesome and worth celebrating. Now down to number two, of course, you know we were gonna say it, Splinter Cell. This time, we're not gonna highlight the whole series, we're gonna focus specifically on our favorite one, Chaos Theory. For many people, it is considered one of the best stealth games ever, and man, there's a lot to it. Sam Fisher has a ton of cool Tom Clancy-esque near-future gadgets, night vision goggles with a bunch of different filters, a cool knife, the ability to go lethal or non-lethal in levels that are pretty convoluted and challenging for the time. Not only that, of course, more than anything, you're embracing light and sound. You need to creep around very carefully and slowly and avoid certain things to make sure you're not heard while also hiding in the pitch black darkness. Sometimes that means you have to create the darkness yourself. Every level, every encounter in Chaos Theory is just perfectly designed and so fun to play. Now down to number one, we got one more grandfather to mention. It's Thief 2 The Metal Age. Really, the first two Thief games really pioneered first-person stealth in some incredible ways. PC fans, longtime PC fans probably know what we're talking about, but the level of atmosphere and tension and just the way everything was designed just made these games so fun to play. Sure, right now, if you're looking at gameplay, you're seeing some of the tools, you're seeing some of the sneaking, even some of the combat, it looks a little busted, but beneath that sort of aged surface is just an incredibly well-designed stealth game with really great and challenging moments. It really set the bar and push things into the future. And you know what? We're gonna thank the Thief games for their service. Those are 20 stealth games we thought were worth highlighting, but we got a couple of bonus ones we also thought were kind of worth mentioning, sort of. Some of us here in the office thought Ghost of Tsushima's stealth elements were worth highlighting here. Personally, I don't think so, but we like to debate here. We like to argue here in the office, so yeah. Another one that's up for debate is Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. One person here on the Game Ranks video team, you know who you are, insisted this game be included. So we're including it for you, whether we agree with you or not. But we wanna hear from all you guys in the comments. What do you think about these honorable mentions, first of all? But along with that, of all of these games, which one is your favorite? There's other stealth games out there or games with some stealth elements. No list is perfect, no list is absolutely complete, so we wanna hear yours down in the comments. Now, if you had fun with this video, maybe learned about a game or two, clicking the like button's all you gotta do. It really helps us out. And if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell, because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.